St. Matthew chapter 17 verses 2 to, this, 2 to 6 And was transfigured before them And his face did shine as the sun And his raiment was white as the light And behold, there appeared unto him Moses And Elias talking with him then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias, while he yet speak. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were sore afraid. Who can understand all these things? This is another aspect of the mysteries of this kingdom. Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, was told that she would be overshadowed by the power of the Holy Ghost. And that which would be born of her will be called the Holy Son of God. When John baptized Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended in the form of a dove, and a voice in heaven declared that this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. If there, um, if there, among the members of the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star and the public anyone who has not seen me spiritually and physically in their home and everywhere yet you continue to doubt even though you see me in your dreams you are still doubting one person who millions and thousands of people see spiritually and physically at the same time and hear his voice distinctly. Here is a person who can appear to millions of people at the same time. Sometimes when you doze off you see him. There is no place where you cannot see him. This is why people conclude that he is not an ordinary man. They say that he has been a member of several secret societies. I ask you, am I the only person in these secret societies when you read St. Matthew chapter 17 verses 2 to 6 tell me who were the persons appearing there before the bright light were Moses Elijah and our Lord Jesus Christ in St. Matthew chapter 16 he had already told them that some among them will not taste of death at that time the disciples did not understand him. After six days, all these things came to pass when they were on the mountain of transfiguration. It has already been said that there is nothing which our Lord Jesus Christ said which will not be made manifest. If he tells you to go there and you will find two persons, when you reach that place, you will find two persons. If he says that it will rain by four o'clock, the rain is bound to fall at that time. This is because all the words proceeding out of his mouth will come to fulfillment. In Revelation chapter 9 verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am the fellow servant, I am thy fellow servant, and thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Whatever he said must be fulfilled. He told his disciples to go to the upper chamber and there they would find a girl with a pot of water. When the disciples went, they found the girl exactly as our Lord Jesus Christ had said. 
He told his disciples to go to the village where they will find an ass tied to a stake. When they went, they found exactly what our Lord Jesus Christ had said. There was nothing which he said that did not come to pass. In spite of the fact that the Bible has been written in various dialects and languages, it has been produced in countless volumes after the departure of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. Since he has not reappeared, the Bible has been thrown away. I will not say that there is any church denomination which has been able to put into practice the words in the Bible. They cannot even interpret it. The Roman Catholics cannot interpret it. How much less the Protestants? No one has been able to interpret the Bible until now. There has been no one who knows anything about the Bible. People simply look at it without any understanding of what it contains. Finally, the best thing for them is to throw it away. Inside Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, in heaven and in earth. Who is the person to whom all power in heaven and earth has been bestowed? Who is this person? If this is what has been done, what power is left? Who is this person to whom all power has been given? There is no one who can understand the statements of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is only our Lord Jesus Christ who understands himself. In St. John chapter 17 verses 4 to 5. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with, the, with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Interpret this passage for me. Who is this man? When the world was not yet created, our Lord Jesus Christ was in existence. If he had existed before the creation of the world, who is he? Are you, con are you deceived by the name which he has used to camouflage himself? You want him to be called God? Is it because he was called Jesus? No precious thing can be presented before swine. Have you heard what has been said in St. John chapter 17 verse 5? Uh, it says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Can another person whose wife rub her back down to the waist? Which man would have accepted to come and die for your sake? For what reason would he have come to die? What would have been his benefit? Those of you who are present here do not be, behave in the same way with your child as you behave with your brother or wife. Your behavior towards each and every one of them is different. The way that you behave with your friend and your concubine is quite different. Your girlfriend will try to dupe you because she is not certain of the future. But the moment that you come out plainly and say, I am going to marry you, she will no longer waste her time in going out to borrow and buy certain things because she is now certain of her future. The man himself will be compelled to write her letters confirming that he will marry her. You can even write and tell your parents that come what may, you are getting married. Remember one thing, that is the letter can be withdrawn at any time. Men are so cunning and crafty that they deceive women. In Hebrews chapter 2, Verses 8 to 9, it reads, Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that 
He put all in subjection under him. He left nothing that is not put under him. But how, but now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angel for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Brethren, have you heard that? Know that you are running to trees, rocks and every other thing for help. None of these things can help you because he had already said that all powers in heaven and on earth has been given to him, which means that everything is under his control. You cannot find power anywhere. Who else can have all the powers in heaven and on earth except the Son of Man? No, you say, I cannot worship man. I want to worship the real God. I want you to go around the whole world and when you find the real God, worship him. You will also find that it is man that God gives power over all the creations of God. This is going to be proved in Hebrews chapter 1 verses 5 to 6. It reads, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he said, And all the angels of God must worship him. Look at this type of man, which, when he comes as the first begotten of God, God will say that all the angels in heaven and earth should bow down and worship him. What kind of man is this? Do not forget that Raphael is an angel. Michael is also an angel. Hell and Hades, the stars, the moon, the sun, rain, fire, thunder, and so on are all angels. It has been said that when he will bring down the first begotten of the Father into the world, all angels must bow down and worship him. Who then is this man to whom all angels must subject themselves to and minister to? If this is if this phenomenon is a tree, stone, or a human being, then it is the time that you took stock of yourself. It was only one angel, Michael, who was able to remove Lucifer from heaven and cast him into the bottomless pit. The angels outnumber all the human beings on earth. As you are all sitting down here, the angels who are also here number more than one million. Consider this type of man which all the angels in heaven and on earth must bow down to worship. In St. Matthew chapter 13 verses 40 to 43 it reads, As therefore the tree, the tears are gathered, and burn in the fire so shall it be in the end of this world the son of man shall send forth his angel and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and then which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who art ear to ear, let them hear. Brethren, have you heard that? Just as, as the government, just as the armed forces, the police, institutions, such as schools, colleges, and courts are arranged in the world, so also are they in the spiritual world. The same situation exists among the angels. They have assignments from God to go, and the rest, all those who break the law and indulge in abominations, such people are brought before the courts. Consider within yourself what type of person this is. 
one who gives an order and all angels obey, he can order an angel to go and arrest a particular person. At another time, he can order that such a person should be released. What I am telling you is that all the angels all over the earth and in heaven are all under the control of our Lord Jesus Christ. The angels are so powerful that one angel is able to destroy the whole world in under one second. Lucifer, who you have been hearing about has been arrested. Do you now see that you are free to walk freely in the darkest night without anything happen happening to you? All the principalities have been brought under subjection. Go to the areas where crocodiles and other wild animals have been causing people to be drowned or to completely disappear. Such things no longer happen. If you like, you can go to the northern part of the Cross River state of Nigeria where elephants have been a constant threat to human life. Today, such threats no longer exist, but because the power of the Holy Spirit has overwhelmed everything in the whole world. The thing that the world are saying is that now that the members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Stars are fully protected by the Holy Spirit personified, they will exercise their power over you when he dies. Brethren, the king of Assyria boasted to Ezekiah that he should not be deceived by his God, that he would march to Israel and destroy all the soldiers, all the inhabitants, and Ezekiah himself. King Ezekiah placed this letter before the altar in the law, before the altar of the Lord. Only an angel was sent to destroy all the Philistines. If only an angel was able to destroy a whole army, what do you think of this person who, when he will come into this world, all the angels in heaven and on earth will bow and worship him? Had you known yourself, you would never have referred to our Lord Jesus Christ as a human being. All the punishments and afflictions besetting the whole world are as a result of all the blasphemous words that the world are speaking against this human being. There is no doubt that our Lord Jesus Christ is a human being as we are, but He is God Almighty. When He came into the world, all the angels had to bow down and worship Him. During the last election, many people contested for the post of the president, but eventually only a person emerged as president. Even if he was formerly your friend, you cannot play with him as you like because he now has the power to deal with you as he likes. This does not mean that he is the most intelligent person but so far as he has been chosen to be the head of state, you have to give him the honor and respect due to him during his tenure of office. If this power and authority is vested in a human being who can be tossed about by sickness or death, imagine one who is the king of kings and lord of lords, the who has control over sickness, over death, and everything created, both seen and unseen. Look at this supernatural man that all the angels in heaven and on earth bow down to and worship. It is very unwise for you to speak evil words or joke with such a human being. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 29, it reads, and God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. After our likeness, and let 
them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fowl of the air and over the fish seas of the sea and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which the, in which the fruit of a uh, tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat who is this man who is given dominion over all created things is he a tree or an angel after God had given Adam power to control everything created. Did God ever withdrew the power from Adam even though he disobeyed him? If you know of any passage in the Bible where it is written that God withdrew this power from Adam, you prove it. God has never at any time withdrawn the rulership from man. Rather, he punished him because of his disobedience. In Genesis chapter 3 verses 17 to 9 it reads, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and thou hast eaten of the tree, of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth, to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. What do you think he is? You say that you regard him as God. Then. People ask you, why you regard him as God? You reply by saying, my wife was barren and she, he made her become fruitful. Or you say, I was sick and he has made me well. The people will then ask you, is that the reason why you accept him to be God? If you go to the necromancer, he will heal your sickness and perform several miracles. It is for this reason that people stick to necromancy, secret societies, and other diabolical powers. Adam came into existence, into existence by being molded from the dust of the earth, and God breathed into him the breath of life. The symbolism of that breath is that God dwelt inside Adam. We have been told that Adam was sent into a deep sleep. This actually means that he died. When he resurrected, that is when a rib from his side was used in creating Eve. It was the same spirit that Adam had which caused our Lord Jesus Christ to reincarnate as a quickening spirit. Have you not heard our Lord Jesus Christ when he said, It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Do you mean to tell me that another person was going to be sent? Was that Comforter not our Lord Jesus Christ himself who was going to reappear? You always claim that you cannot worship a man. Whether that person is your mother or father, a governor or president, a commissioner or a permanent secretary, whatever his station is in life, he is a human being. How will you not worship man when at your different places of work you are placed under superior officers, even though you claim that 
you're even though you claim that you cannot rush for man it is a man who is placed in a position to promote you sometimes you complain that your promotion has been withheld this is so because you refuse to worship man when the time for promotion come yours will not be given to you while a much junior officer is promoted at the moment is the world not filled with angels and spirits are you able to see these in these, these invisible things are you able to see these invisible beings no matter how great a spirit or an angel is since they are your servant you can dismiss them or ask them to go away from you this is because it was it has been ordained by god that man must rule over the angels the spirits and all the creations of god the passage says you should love the brethren and honor the king this is the position in which i find myself apart from that i would not say that i cannot respect man i would like you to interpret this passage for me first peter chapter 2 verse 17 honor all men love the brotherhood fear god and honor the king who is man that you should worship him a woman a man an old man a thief a native doctor and a sick person are all these not human beings you do not regard man as precious as a precious thing rather you always complain that i cannot worship man i am worshiping the real god the fact is that man is a precious thing and must be honored and respected honor all men love the brotherhood who are the brotherhood are they not human beings you are asked to fear the king who is the king is he not a human being you have been told to fear god is god not a human being where what are you doing now